Hello, my name is Faye Anamabas. I'm the founder and co-director of PEAK, Parents of Estranged Adult Kids. Welcome to PEAK. Today, I want to talk about a crucial mistake we often make as estranged parents when we fail to realize that we are dealing with trauma. So here's what's hap what happens for many estranged parents. We are given the message either through words or through silence, either directly or through another person that our adult child will no longer be in relationship with us. We are cut off. As a result, we experience intense pain, perhaps the greatest pain that many of us will experience in our lifetime. And since the disconnection is what created the pain, we make the reasonable assumption that a reconnection will eliminate the pain. And we then go on the internet or we start reading books uh, that will give us the four or five steps that we can take that will lead to a reconciliation and that will eliminate our pain. Give me about five minutes to explain why that doesn't work and what does work. As you probably heard me say a number of times now, parental estrangement is a trauma with symptoms similar to those exhibited by persons returning from a combat zone. Research has revealed that trauma physically changes the brain. Those changes to the brain have three impacts which make an immediate reconciliation with our adult child unlikely. First, uh, parental trauma compromises our ability to communicate constructively. Communication has two parts, as we know, speaking and listening. In speaking, we need to be able to constructively communicate our thoughts and feelings. Trauma makes it difficult for us uh, to do that. Many estranged parents spend their first two or three uh, meetings in peak unable to say much about what they think and feel. It's not because they're otherwise inarticulate or defective, they're traumatized. If they can speak at all, it's often only about a single overwhelming feeling, sad or mad or scared. But speaking is only half of the problem. There's listening. And listening is the ability to hear and understand what another person is thinking and feeling. Trauma uh, makes that nearly impossible for estranged parents. It's like asking a person who is lying on a gurney after a serious car accident to listen to someone tell them all the ways they are a bad driver. Trauma compromises our ability to speak and listen, which puts constructive communication with an estranged adult child almost out of reach for most of us. The second impact that trauma has on the brain is that it impairs our judgment and impedes good decision making. One of the results is that um, we tend to become impulsive. Now, impulsiveness is the nemesis of maintaining good boundaries. Many extremely competent people in any other area of life may impulsively uh, jump on a plane show up at their child's uh, door unannounced when the adult child's made it clear they don't want to see them, where they text, where they send letters, where they post on social media. It happens to the best of us. But the result of our impulsiveness, in spite of the movies, is that it almost always makes things worse. So why do we do this? Trauma. The third impact that trauma has on the brain is that it degrades our confidence and self-worth. And as a result, we can totally abandon ourselves. We'll do anything, confess to anything, beg, borrow, or steal to have that relationship back. Because we think by having it back, that it'll eliminate the pain. But no healthy relationship is sustainable when one party compulsively gives up their own dignity and their own legitimate needs just to be in that relationship. Why do we first get abandoned and then abandon ourselves? Trauma. 
So what does work? Focusing on recovering from the trauma. Research has shown that 80 to 90% of traumatized persons experience a significant amount of relief and healing after just a few weeks of work. And given the right resources and the necessary motivation, an estranged parent can grow beyond the mental, emotional, physical, and relational suffering that accompanies a complex trauma and into a life with uh, meaning, purpose, and even zest. At whatever point our child may decide they want a relationship with us again, we're going to be in a much better frame of mind if we have recovered the ability <laughs> to speak and listen constructively we've regained our ability to make good decisions and rein in that impulsiveness and rebuild our self-esteem. And that's what we do in PEAK. And I don't care who you are, what you've done, or what mistakes you have made. Everyone deserves to recover.